Today I'm going to show you how to go deep into your camcorder settings so you can go from this to this. I love camcorders. I just can't stop playing with them. I'm shooting with them right now. I got a Panasonic VX981 doing the wide shot and I have a Sony AX43 doing the close-ups. And the one that I'm holding in my hand right now is a new one I just bought. This is the most recent one they made. It came out like a year ago, the end of 2022. It's a Canon G70. It's a 4K UHD camcorder. It's not too big. It's really well built. Canon quality it has a big three and a half inch screen. It has a 20 times zoom. That's 30 to 627 millimeter equivalent. That's pretty amazing. Five axis stabilization, f1.8 to 2.8 lens, built-in ND filters, eighth inch mic input, and it only weighs under two pounds, 880 grams. I love how camcorders have, like, you don't need a lens cap. You just flip the switch and it opens and closes. This one actually has an eyepiece on the back, which is pretty cool. It does have a small sensor, it's 1 over 2.3, so that's smaller than 1 inch, which means this camcorder has a smaller sensor than the Pocket 3. But this is not a camcorder. This is a wide angle lens on a stick. This is what makes camcorders so great. This has a 30 to 627 millimeter lens. That's like having six lenses. And it can zoom really smoothly and quietly, which this thing cannot do. Like I said, this is just a wide angle lens on a stick. There's nothing you can do with changing the lens. You can't zoom or anything. But 1 over 2.3 is still good as sensors go. It's the same size as these two that I'm shooting with right here. So why do camcorders have a big body like this when you can stick a one inch into a little thing like this? Well, you can run them all day without heating. That's one of the big pluses of camcorders. But the other thing is you've got a big lens on here. Look at the size of the lens on the front of this thing. That compared to that. Much bigger lens. And like I said, this is a zoom lens, which means you can run through the lens range of six different lenses. You got the rock switch, you got the mic input, and you've got a much bigger screen. What a joy it is to look at a big screen like this compared to the little screen on this thing. And it has a hot shoes, so you can stick stuff on there. It's just more fun to use and it just feels good in your hands. Now the one thing about camcorders, especially uh, Canon and some other one like Sony also, when you get them out of the box, you turn it on and you push record, the image looks bluish. It looks like this. That's just yuck. Now the Panasonic, the VX981, the minute you take it out of the box and you turn it on, the colors look great. There's nothing you have to do to it. But Sony and Canon, for some reason, their cameras, when you take them out of the box and push record, they look kind of bluish. It makes you think like this camera isn't really that good. Luckily, you can go in here and change a bunch of settings. And that's what this video is about. I know I just had a long rambling introduction, but now we're getting to the good stuff. So you can change it to look from this to this. Now that is pretty cool. Now this camera does not shoot 10-bit. It doesn't do log or have LUTs or anything like that. So how do you pull this off? Well, you go in here, there's some secret settings. You have to dive in deep to the menu to create your own custom profile. And it's pretty deep. I mean, you can change all kinds of stuff. I created my own custom profile by changing stuff like the gamma, the matrix, the black master pedestal, the black gamma, low key saturation, the knee on the slope, red gain, blue gain. A lot of you don't know what that means, but professionals from 20 years ago who operated camcorders usually know this stuff. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I created my own custom profile. Now most people on social media nowadays, they create their own LUTs and they sell their own settings so you can make your stuff look like theirs. So I could take this opportunity to sell these, these settings, but that's not me. I don't do that. I'm not, I say, I, I don't need the money. I like, I just want to share joy because I figure what else, whatever, if I give stuff out for free, then life will give me stuff for free also. I mean, what you put out comes back to you. So I'll post my settings down below in the description box. So basically what you do is you click the menu button, which is on the right of the eyepiece. Under the camera category, you go down to number four and then down to CP function and you turn that on. You can now play around with custom profiles. You click on this function button here and now you go down all the way to CP1. It's on CP1, that's the factory setting. So click over to CP2, which is your first custom profile. Then you click the little settings button and now you start playing with all your settings to whatever you want. I'll give you mine for free. <laughs> and then you got your new settings and you can look beautiful with your camcorder. So this was just a quick video showing you how you can change settings in some of these camcorders to look much better than it is when you get out of the factory. My next video, I'm going to actually compare my most recent favorite consumer camcorders. 
and uh, we're gonna compare those. I know you can get great stuff with uh, full frame and blurry backgrounds all that, but there's something about the convenience, ease of use of a camcorder. You just flip it open and it turns on automatically. You got the lens cap built into it. Uh, it's just, everything's ready to go. It, they, they work so dependably and they're just fun to use. It's just the fun factor. I think that's the most important thing with me is the fun factor. And I'm shooting with them right now. This is a VX981 uh, from Canasonic and this is a Sony AX43. Kind of cool, huh, what you can do with the settings. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>